This is James Hawker of OK First, here at the National Weather Center in Norman. The United States Next Route Network is currently undergoing a major upgrade called Dual Polarization, or Dual Pole for short. Dual Pole provides a lot of new capability that we didn't have before, but at the same time, also presents some new challenges that we need to consider. To help us sort through this, we're going to meet with several meteorologists from the National Weather Service or any decision training branch. We're going to talk about the capabilities, the limitations, what it might mean for emergency management. The way radars work is they send out a burst of energy called a pulse to send it out into the atmosphere, hit a target, and then the energy bounces back, and that's where the radar data comes from. With a conventional radar, that energy is oriented in one direction, horizontally for weather, because that's where the most important information is. With a dual polarization radar, the benefit is, is it sends out that ener energy, but it can actually receive that energy in two different directions. And so it's able to get more information that way. Basically, dual pole is an enhancement to the existing radars. Basically, they rotate the beam 45 degrees, and then they added an additional set of receivers that gives us a, a measurement in the vertical and, and horizontal dimensions. So I kind of think of it like a medical scanner. Before, you, you might could only uh, tell how tall you were or how short you were. Now we can tell how fat and skinny you are, too. That additional information can really help someone who's trained to use the radar better understand what's going on. Uh, a conventional radar, because it only has information in one dimension, it just tells you about the size of what you're seeing. Dual polarization radar, you get that same size information, but you also get more information about the target's shape, as well as the variety of targets that are available, which can really help you when you're trying to identify, say, rain versus snow, uh, hail from heavy rain, things like that. Before, we, when it came, came to precipitation, we basically knew if there were raindrops or, or, or hailstones or whatever, and basically knew their size. Now we can tell their shape, and we can tell how alike and how different they are. The goal of the dual polarization upgrade was to, the, the catchphrase is to do no harm. So in terms of how uh, the products update, how they scan the atmosphere, that will stay the same. The one big difference will be is that there will be more products available. The same tilts, the, the same scanning strategy, the, the same old products will basically work just as they, they were before. What, what we are going to get are new, new dual pole products, new algorithms, new rainfall products and stuff like that. A radar is still a radar. Uh, that's not going to change, nor do I foresee that ever really changing much. Well, it doesn't scan any faster. It doesn't. It doesn't have any more detail. It doesn't see any closer to the ground. Um, so, so these things are ba basically as they they were be before. Um, so, so those those types of things really haven't changed. As the radar pulse goes out from the radar, it gets bigger in size. It spreads out, and as a result, objects that are farther away from the radar. The radar doesn't see them as well as something that's up close. So that's not going to change. Dual pole is not, not a magic bullet. Um, it, it doesn't replace and enhance the, the radars with, with new, new, new updates and things like, like that any faster. The positive thing is that dual pole was developed here in Oklahoma. So that means the algorithms are developed here based on the clouds that we typically have here. Um, and, 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 and so those, those, those things are positive for us that are going to be challenging for the parts of the country. Well, the big thing with dual pole data is it is a really steep learning curve to pick everything up, even for an expert in radar meteorology. So for someone who's kind of new to it, it's going to be very intimidating. Forecasters will will get the, the most benefit in, initially, um, and so because of, of dual pole, they'll be able to issue better warnings. Um, things like winter storm warnings will be better because we'll we'll be able to change track the changeover from um, from rain to snow or or snow to rain better. Uh, severe thunderstorm warnings will get better because we'll know more 
more in information if, if there, there's large hail or, 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 or no hail. Eventually, flash flood warnings will, will get better too because the rain pro windfall products will, will, will get better. So, so it, initially, it'll be forecasters, but, but, but then as experience grows, more, more and more people will, will get benefit from it too. Some of the new products, some of them will be more intuitive to users than others. Some of them may take a long time, especially for a novice user to try to pick up and, and get some meaningful information out of. But uh, there definitely should be benefits, whether you are a meteorologist, an emergency manager, uh, wherever you fall on that scale. There's an instantaneous rate product. And I think that is a product that will be useful to just about anyone. Uh, it'll be pretty intuitive for people to pick up and use right away. Uh, and it will give them something they haven't had before. Most older precipitation products are an accumulation product. Mm -hmm. So it tells you how much rainfall has fallen over a certain period of time. The instantaneous rate product will tell you how much rainfall is happening right then. Like an inch an hour or two, inch an hour, two inches an hour, three inches an hour, something like that. Um, so it'll be e easy to use. And when those rates get up there, then, then you know you've, you've, you've got flash flooding going on, almost re regardless of looking at, at anything else. So, so, so that's, that's a, a, a really good one. The uh, hydro classification algorithm product it, um, can, can have s some use. It'll help distinguish be between rain and hail and snow and, and, and uh, biologicals and ground clutter and stuff like that. As users become more comfortable with some of the new dual pole products, I could see them using others. Uh, the hard thing is, is the different dual pole products, most of them, they need to be used in context with the more traditional radar products. Uh, so for instance, the hydrometeor classification product gives us an opportunity to see what the radar thinks based on the various data is the most likely type of precipitation or a biological target that the radar is seeing. It's, but its primary use is actually for trying to determine the best precipitation estimates. Well, that information can be really helpful for somebody just doing basic analysis such as an emergency manager, but you really need to use it in context with the reflectivity data to get a best understanding of what it is you're looking at. One of the, the big benefits for dual polarization radar is that it has the ability to fairly clearly detect tornadic debris. Uh, it, now there are caveats to that. The tornado would have to be relatively close to the radar and it would have to be causing enough damage that enough debris is lofted so the radar can see it. And so, especially in some cases, they would have to loft the debris fairly high. Uh, but at least at this point, in the number of cases we've seen, uh, it, it's promising that we will be able to detect tornadoes pretty well. Now, with emergency managers, that they're heavily involved with a lot of activities when it comes to tornado season, um, it won't, this capability won't replace what we need from emergency managers, but it will certainly help out in cases where a human spotter might have difficulties, such as at night, if a tornado is rain wrapped. Uh, ultimately, this information can be conveyed by a trained meteorologist with the National Weather Service, say, to emergency managers through the various products that we make available or in chat rooms. Mm -hmm. And as a result, hopefully this will help emergency managers keep their spotters safer during an event and then after an event it should help them uh, determine you know what areas were most greatly impacted and how they can help in a post event assessment the uh, thing uh, about the debris is that it's not something that a, a casual user is is going to be able to do immediately by themselves because you 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 have to look at the collision coefficient product in conjunction with the ref, with the velocity and the, re, the reflectivity product so it's kind of complicated to do uh, but e eventually e, you know e, even more advanced you outside users can can probably do that too and and so initially say an emergency manager um, suspects a tornado has happened in, in their area, then you can get in contact with your WCM. They can can track the, the tornado debris signatures for you, and then that might help with damage and, and things like that. First of all, there's a big steep learning curve because you can't 
really use dual pole out of context. It's got to be in context with, with, with all of the other dual pole products and with, with all of the existing base data products too. So, so forecasters are, have to, to, to basically be able to interpret eight screens of data at once in, in order to, to make best, best use of it. One piece of advice I have for new users, and I actually heard this from a TV meteorologist, is to really take baby steps and just maybe even work just one product at a time and just integrate that one, build up a comfort level with it. And then once you, you feel comfortable using it and it seems intuitive to you, that's when you start working on integrating other products. The big thing, especially for those of you who have been, do, say, doing emergency management for a couple of decades now, and remember what happened when the 88Ds were first fielded, uh, there was a bit of a learning curve in terms of working with the new system, uh, new products coming online and those products being improved that same process is still gonna happen with dual pole. It's not gonna come out of the box working perfectly without needing updates. It's a little bit like a new model car that comes out from Detroit or from another uh, car company. It's gonna take a little while for it to mature, to, to move from infancy and become something that everybody's comfortable with, that the science catches up with it and technologically is working like a well-tuned machine. To learn much more about dual pole radar from the Warning Decision Training Branch, please go to the following website. And a special thanks to Andy Wood, Dale Morris, and the staff at the Warning Decision Training Branch for partnering with OK First on this video. I kind of think of it like a medical scanner. Before, you you might could only uh, tell how tall you were or how short you were. Now. You, we can tell how fat and skinny you are too.